good luck, Emily. If he bites her, I'm not paying for it. But the way he scoots himself <laughs> back. <laughs> You literally have a dog trainer next to you, and it's owner. Uh, this, way, this way is funnier. <laughs> Blaze. He knows the off command, right? Yes. <sighs> but Emily. <laughs> oh, my God. Show me your ab muscles, Blaze. <laughs> oh, wait a second. I am not going to misjoin the morse. <laughs> okay, Hello. this is the gonna, might be the most chaotic episode we ever post. <sighs> Let's do it. Ready? It's warm. Oh, he is up. Uh, uh, oh my god! He was like, oh. "Welcome to All Things Internet, a show where we talk about things we see on the internet that usually have to do with the internet." And Emily tries her gosh darnest to fact check and research whatever she thinks I might think is applicable. Today is a different episode. Um, Emily and I are both not where we say we are at the moment. Uh, she's in Virginia and I'm in Maryland. But currently, while we're recording this, we're in my house with Joy. Hello. No. <laughs> Into the Hello. microphone. Thank you. <laughs> um, so Emily, for her birthday, asked to have a week off of all things internet. And then I was like, okay. And then we both were like, no, nope, that's not going to work. So we decided to do like, it's kind of like a bonus episode, but regularly scheduled. Yeah. It's like when shows do musical episodes. You're like, I didn't ask for this, but they're <laughs> going to give it to you. We didn't want this. We didn't ask for this, but will we sit and watch the whole thing? Yeah. yeah. And then just use your guys slightly hate us a little bit more yeah. the rest of your lives. Here's the thing. Writing ATI takes me anywhere from four to five hours. Record- it used to take me 30 minutes. Okay. Recording ATI takes an hour to an hour and a half with setup. Yeah, and then, it only took me 45. And then editing ATI takes me another four hours. And so. Okay. That's right. right. Yeah. So I don't want to lose a full day with my family because I, I, they are on the East Coast and I never get to see them. So I was like, please not okay (laughs) she asked if i would edit it and i said no but (laughs) what we could do is just film an episode of whatever we want and so instead of reporting on the news today we're going to answer questions and play games and joy happens to be here yeah Yeah. so she's going to join us and do that so it's a little special episode um just so that emily and i can have a break Meaning we're just going to do more work ahead of time. Yeah. And then we're going to take a week off. But you yeah. guys still get your stuff. Yeah. All right, Emily. What are we starting with? Questions? We can start with questions. Yeah. I, asked, I like questions. Me too. I asked people to send in questions on Instagram. And we got some pretty good ones. All right. Also, dog of the day is Joy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, where is Blaze? But just his butt is in because Emily decided she needed that spot more than him so rudely so rudely you could have sat off camera i could have you know you just hear my voice yeah you could have like drawn a little stick figure in my spot yeah i mean half yeah. our listeners are just listeners they're exactly. not watching or just they put your know. face on blaze's face oh i could do that <gasps> that would have been very easy in editing that would have super easy it would have taken no time at all uh, very none. distracting though it would have been <laughs> yes um all right start off with an easy question Okay. I, are there hard questions? I mean, there's just questions that require some thought. Are we like doing math? Maybe. Oh, okay. Did you bring your calculator? It's always on my phone, despite what math teachers told me my whole life. Yeah. You're not going to walk around with a calculator. Fuck. Uh-huh. <laughs> Checkmate. You're on your phone. I was the same way. I'm like, <laughs> no, just you. And, <laughs> and then your day, pay, face went deadpan like you did something wrong. <laughs> so, like, no, I had yeah. a tra- trauma response of getting yelled at for using my phone. <laughs> Oh, I was like, no, you're good. All right. What's our easy philosophy question? What's your lucky number? Hmm. Oh, I don't really have one. Oh, oh. You? Mine's always been five. Mm. Okay. I get- Mine's always 13. Um, I don't like that number. I don't like five. That's funny. Yeah. yeah I don't like- Five freaks me I'm, out. I don't really like threes. Oh, I love threes. They're that's, so cute oh, and like adorable. That's so funny. What? Yeah. Threes I've never like, looked at a three and been like, Me yeah. either. Oh, they're so like round and, and I bubbly. Just like and I just dry, like riding the five. But anytime anyone's been like, pick a number one through whatever in order to get you something. Yeah. I've always picked five and it's huh. always worked for me. Ooh. So, huh. I guess like my sports numbers were all like always either seven 11 or 12. I feel okay. like 7 and 11 are popular numbers. Yeah. Like people say those. I don't feel like, I know a lot of people with angel numbers mm-hmm. because I'm in the gay community. <laughs> um, What's angel numbers? It's like three numbers that are the same, like 222, 333, 444. Oh, okay, okay. Um, and a lot of people have those. And Abby has them. So whenever I see 
her angel numbers i get excited for her but i don't have anything like that it's supposed to be like a sign from the divine right 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 you know yes yeah <laughs> baby divine <laughs> It's 111. It's a sign. Yeah. 111 happens every day, twice a day. I don't know. But they, they bring people comfort. So good no, I totally get it. I definitely but believe in me that kind not of stuff. so much. <laughs> me not so much. I feel like I like what's the word? Uh, humanize is not the right word, but like certain numbers give me certain feelings. Anth- anthropomorphize. Wait, how do you say it? Anth- Whoa, we have wow. a smart person here today. When you give human like characteristics and like thought to an inanimate object or an animal oh my god oh, that's Jeopardy. why she knows it because people are like my dog was just a little i didn't say it correctly though but i can spell it but it's a, 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 it's like an, anti-promorphize or can something i like. have the definition please <laughs> the origin <laughs> please put it into a sentence how many syllables um yeah i feel like five is very sharp and pointy and mean and black and red and and oh my god yeah and three to me is light sky blue and round and cute and like childish uh, why wouldn't you like eight if it's that's rounder i don't like eight it's okay like, it also gives me bad vibes well, that's a bubble why so. i know infinity sign i don't mind that oh but it's literally a sign you have some issues with numbers girl yeah have you heard about how some people see numbers in color yeah synesthesia yeah it's Mm -hmm. so interesting i was watching a video about that the other day my friend from college has synesthesia and she paints her music what she sees so she you can actually order this product from her where you give her a song she'll listen to it in the dark with headphones on and then she'll start painting how that song is in colors it's really interesting i feel like she could just be bsing everybody she could be but she's on shrooms yeah (laughs) But synesthesia is like a diagnosis. No, it is a thing. thing. Yeah, yeah. It's very into They were the thing that I was watching. It even had a bunch of kids on it, too. And they were talking about what color they see mm-hmm. with certain numbers. Like, do stuff. they, with the people with synesthesia, <laughs> um, do they all see the same color? No. Versus, oh, so it's, it's no. individual. So, but someone could be completely making this up. They could be. I tried to um, do a quiz because there's a quiz that you can take online. It's like 100 questions to see if you have synesthesia or not. And I tried to take it and I was just like, click, 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 click. And I tried to remember patterns as much as I could. Like I knew threes are like blue and light or whatever, but I, it, I couldn't trick it. Oh, OK. Yeah. That's also, fun. have you seen where? Um, never mind. My thought. It's like just... day, days of the week. People think days of the week have a certain smell. Yeah. It's like your senses get get mixed up in your head i remember what is what i was gonna say too when somebody says like a word to you like f- heart did people see that word differently in their head yeah. some people see it in 3d some people see it like left oh, to I right pictured a, a red drawn heart when you said that yeah, yeah yeah some people take it very literally yeah it's very interesting yeah we, i think we talked about this on the podcast a little bit ago but yeah my my like mom can't dream in anything but black and white and my sister cannot see images in their head at all they oh, can yes. only see words yes yeah and then like some people too they don't have that little voice yeah in their mm-hmm. head which i i feel like they could be lying because i cannot imagine my life well, without is, that is, little yeah. voice is in your my... internal voice your voice or someone else's because mine is not my voice who's in your head emily it changes to mine me. is mine yours is yours honestly I don't i don't think i i've ever thought about like the voice it's just it just it's just there. my thoughts. It's just there. It's my thoughts. But yeah. it's the same. If I were to think about it, I'm like, yeah, I guess it's the same tone as my voice. Yeah. yeah. But it can happen on top of each other, too. Like, mm-hmm. I can be talking about something and still have that voice saying something else in my head while I'm talking. Oh, yeah, of mm-hmm. course. Yeah, it's wild. Yeah. Yeah. Brain, man. <laughs> um, oh, okay. What? Well, that was more of a philosophical, philosophical yeah. <laughs> question than we thought it would be. A fa- um, fa- waffle. If you did have a wedding registry, what would you put on it if you had to make it today? Oh, um there's this thing i want on the back of my truck that it's like a, it's like a blanket that you put on the back of the truck so i can load up our bikes and it mm. doesn't scratch up the back oh um i actually have started a wish list on amazon that's for myself that if uh i we've created a budget for ourselves and if i have money left over from our budget i'm gonna buy myself these things on amazon nice so whatever i just want and personally i would put on my amazon wish i would put on my registry well, and it's good for christmas too when people are like what mm-hmm. do you want our birthdays what do you yeah. want just yeah. send them a link to the registry yeah, yeah. exactly that's so what nice. would you guys put on um probably well, just ha- like house stuff you need a house first why don't you put a house on it well but the thing the thing is <laughs> i'm not getting married till i have a house oh right, yeah right, oh right. that's true that's true that's true yeah so if we're getting married then we have a house <laughs> oh, okay right. yeah oh also we need a new we don't need it but our 
flat screen TV in our living room still has a little a BB in the middle of it. Who from, did that? From Emily's birthday party two, two years, years ago. ago. So we've just been living with like a messed up TV and everyone like first notices it and then everyone just like I it don't goes see away. it anymore. It's OK. But I mean, back in the day when I was living by myself, you know, paycheck to paycheck, I had a TV at one point where like almost half the screen didn't work. And I, yeah. Yeah, you know, I same. mean, we, we make do. So it's but matter. that little dot. Yeah, you don't see it anymore. I don't see it anymore. But I'm definitely trying to like save, like not save up, but like not immediately buy myself things. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All right, Emily, what's on yours? I would not. And I, and when I heard at one point that I was married, I don't know, that's a weird rumor. Um, when old me got married, we did a honeymoon registry because we had, we were already living together for two years. So we already had everything we needed. So here's my thing. People are still going to buy you things. They didn't. Really? No, not one person. We had like kids make us like drawings and art and stuff. An excuse to not buy gifts. Well, I yeah. know some people, there are some people in my family who are mm. traditional in the sense where they're like, no, you buy them a present for this thing. Mm-mm. Some people what? like our older relatives gave us checks mm. instead. Instead, Because like, give me a check. Yeah. yeah. I like a check. Yeah. yeah. Give the me a check The way we had day. it set up, it was like you could buy like one night stay at a hotel or you could buy an excursion for us like on this website, which oh, I love cool. because we didn't need that's anything. That's awesome. And yeah. when the older people didn't know how to work the website or like whatever, they just wrote us a check. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I'd take my answer back. I'd start a GoFundMe <laughs> for our honeymoon and just have everyone uh-huh. donate to it. Or oh. I had a friend that did a GoFundMe for like, um home stuff too but like big stuff like if they if they wanted to contribute to like a home renovation project or something they could i don't know you well i took this question very literal i too would not have a registry because we already have everything we need but if i had to put something on it well because i always say like for my birthday and christmas like you don't need to get me anything and people go no we want to get you something yeah Yeah. and i'm like they're like don't make it hard just tell us and i'm like Okay, fine, because I've been told I'm very difficult to buy for. You should see me and Abby and Joy before holidays and your birthday. We're in a group chat or we're in person and we're like, what do we get her? And we're both just like, we're all just sitting there like blank face having flashbacks. (laughs) I know Emily called me about the piano and I was like, well, I'm actually. They got me an electric piano for my birthday. (laughs) I was like, well, I'm actually driving to the mall today because I'm going to buy Rachel a pair of white Converse for her birthday. And I mean, Emily goes. Nope, she got those today. Yep. And I, was like, <laughs> I literally was like, I was like, I literally just saw them sitting by the front door today. Do not buy those for her. <laughs> those were Abby's. <laughs> oh, so cut up. <laughs> My bad. I really just oh. wanted you to go have these with me on the piano. <laughs> Screaming. <laughs> no, but yeah, I've been told I'm very difficult to buy for because I can just buy things myself. Mm-hmm. Um, so I'm trying not to. Because okay. also it makes it so I don't accumulate a bunch of junk. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then I have things that people can buy me. Nice. And something to look forward to. And for something yourself. to look forward to. Yes. So there it is. Yeah. I'm excited to see what I can buy myself at the end of the month. I love that. I know. <laughs> I wonder if that's why <laughs> they say like uh, people will say a lot of rich people like money doesn't make you happy because mm-hmm. eventually lies that like wears They off. say to a certain amount. They've done yeah. the math. No, I don't believe it. Oh, yeah. But no. I, but, <laughs> I was going to say, I don't believe it either. <laughs> but, but kind of based off of what you just said, though, like you go through this process of like, OK, now I'm at a point where I can basically get myself almost whatever I want. And then yeah. after a certain time, you almost have to find that like that like high about it again. You know, No, because then you can just spend your money on vacations. Well, yeah. we're also trying to budget for vacations, too. Yeah. Right, right, like, right. right. So um, it's not that you don't want to like you're it's like uh, not fun anymore. It's like I'm trying to just. Budget. Yeah. So the thing is, money obviously doesn't buy you happiness, but it it buys you convenience <laughs> and takes away a lot of stress in life that yeah. could be causing you unhappiness. Mm. Yeah. So because there's a lot of people who just are clinically depressed that could have all the money in the world and then go on all these vacations and they're still going to be clinically depressed. But if it's like but clinically situation- depressed in a million dollar. Yeah. Home. So it's better. Yeah. It's obviously it takes away the the stress. I'm like when people are like, you know, I, I think the saying is BS. Oh, yeah. yeah, I think it's BS. But it does. I'm like, I can see where because they've done studies on people who won the lottery. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And their happiness is the same. But that's because they weren't struggling before. Right. Oh, yeah. They were they, just living I want to say they did the math and it's one hundred and seventy five thousand. Uh, like money can buy happiness up to one hundred and seventy five thousand a year. Yeah. Was that with inflation? We have so many questions. <laughs> <laughs> so many questions because that's. It's in this economy, economy? I was gonna it's say that much. number doesn't really seem yeah. that high. No, I mean, it's like, not. Because I said to you, because we were talking the other day, and we were like, I think I had said to the group of girls, I was like, what amount of money would you have to be guaranteed monthly on OnlyFans to post on OnlyFans? And I was like, thirty million. Yeah, and I was like, oh, twenty thousand a month. And you're like, Emily, you realize that's literally 
what'd you say like how much is that a year it's uh hold on i have to get my calculator my teacher said i would never have because to me, twenty thousand a month like would solve well, all that's of my problems. Two hundred and forty thousand, but then you have to minus thirty five percent for taxes, which is eighty four thousand. So you actually only get one hundred and fifty six thousand. But to year. me, I'm like that would solve all no, of wouldn't. my problems. No, and it then wouldn't. but yeah, but then because I didn't realize twenty thousand only equaled out to be two hundred thousand. Yeah, in my head, I was like, oh, I'd be a millionaire. You're just thinking about per monthly. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah, yeah. yeah, no. So like you're like twenty thousand dollars to spend oh, three thousand on bills, and I have this much exactly, money left. Exactly. Yeah. I think a million a year would be like the best for like anybody. And mm-hmm. I don't think anyone needs any more than that. I don't think anyone needs like a million everyone, a year. Yeah, a million a year. Don't they say that it's like I'm five saying, million and you can live off of that? Isn't that what it was? Yo, you could retire. Maybe no, if you, you could retire invest. if you have like, tw- I don't remember what it is. Yeah. You have to have like 12 million to retire. Oh, okay. Or okay, like okay, that. okay. Or like, it could be five. Million but a year I'm saying nice. million a year. If you're looking for like, I think if like the peak happiness, I think a million a year because okay. you wouldn't be able to go buy a boat and an airplane. But I think but you could be just completely carefree. Well, that's what I'm saying. Like so much of my depression comes from worrying about money. And so I think if I I mean, I'd still have my job because I love it so much. It just gives me serotonin. So I'd come and work for free. Uh, if you were making a million a year, please quit. OK, great. And then, and then <laughs> please, we can just, for the love of God, quit. We can all just go travel together instead. <laughs> um, but yeah, like if I didn't have to work, if I didn't have to worry about like emergencies and stuff, I feel like so much of my anxiety and depression would just get like lifted off of my shoulders. But I know I will never get to the point where I don't worry about it unless I'm like in an excessive surplus. Yes. So even if I did have enough to like say for emergencies and blah, 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 like it still wouldn't be enough for me because I'm so panicked about money. I would have to make like a million a year. Abby and I have a theory that people that stress will always find a reason to stress. Mm. So like if you no longer worry about money, you're going to start worrying about something else. And we've noticed it with people like this thing really stressed them out and their whole life was just stressed about this one thing and then it went away and then they just found something else to stress about the same level. Like if I didn't worry about my dogs, I'd be worrying about something else. Yeah. And so like people will always find something to be stressed about. It's just like when people have huge stressors, they're like, God, why is that person complaining about something so simple? Yeah. And it's like because that's the biggest thing in their life. Right. So you're always going to find something to stress about. But money, having that taken away is really nice. Oh, I mean, I'd rather be stressed about Daisy on the beach of Jamaica. <laughs> yes, exactly. Then, yeah, Hold I'm on, right. my girlfriend's calling me. This is more important than everybody else. <laughs> sponsor, sponsor. ZocDoc, ZocDoc is our sponsor for today. If you've been stewing about a health problem you have and you've almost resorted to texting a group chat of friends to get their opinion, well, you're extremely unlikely to find quality medical advice in your friend's group chat, but you can find it from a doctor on ZocDoc. Thousands of medical professionals on ZocDoc are there to help you. They listen like a friend, but they give you expert care that you actually need. ZocDoc is the only free app that lets you find and book doctors who are patient-reviewed, take your insurance, are available when you need them, and treat almost every condition under the sun. When you're not feeling your best and just trying to hold it together, finding great care shouldn't take up all of the energy you have left. That's where ZocDoc comes in. Using their free app that millions of users rely on, you can find the right doctor that meets your needs and fits your schedule. Book an appointment with just a few taps in their app and start feeling better faster with ZocDoc. Go to ZocDoc.com slash all things internet and download the ZocDoc app for free. Then find and book a top rated doctor today. Many are available within 24 hours. That's Z-O-C-D-O-C dot com slash all things internet. ZocDoc.com slash all things internet. And we're back. Sorry. Okay. Abby needed to know if she could get her dog vaccinated right before we leave for a vacation. So that was that. Um, Okay. I found the study and it was in 2010. So account for inflation. This is 13 years later. Yeah. They they said in a 2010 study found that money could only boost happiness up to a certain point. That point being 75,000 annual earnings beyond that figure. The researchers concluded money had little impact. Okay. So what's the inflation? Inflation of 75,000 in 2010 to now 2010 i'm just gonna say if i'm gonna cry i'd rather cry in a lamborghini than my hyundai elantra right you know if i'm gonna stress i'd rather stress about things that okay. don't have to do no. with money. <laughs> right not okay. a chance One hundred and three thousand 
It's it's rounded up to 104,000 a year. No. No. (laughs) No. No. (laughs) No. Mm -mm. Like, sorry. Right. 104,000 after paying taxes? We're going to say after taxes. Even so. As someone, I feel I can (laughs) speak on this because I've been dirt poor. Yeah. And I've struggled from paycheck to paycheck to where I am now where I'm I'm not making a million a year, but I'm making a, a, a nice sum. Nope. (laughs) <laughs> it is definitely better yeah past the hundred thousand a yeah. year yeah like i feel like, uh, maybe it's because we live in california yeah i'm sure that mm-hmm. adds to it but yeah it, but now though everywhere's expensive like it's not just california yeah and again like you can obviously find happiness when you don't have a lot of money like i've always been a happy person yes but this for sure studies about money. yeah but when we're talking about like how much money will has can affect someone's life yes and yeah. I, think, I think when you don't have money too, like you almost have no choice but to find happiness yes. in the little things. You oh know? Like, <laughs> but if you're a, st- a worrier like M, hmm? it does help. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Hmm? It's a whole thing. Hmm? I'm saying, yeah. I don't think anyone needs to be making above 10 million a year ever. Okay. Because why are you hoarding that much wealth? <laughs> he doesn't agree. He does not Please, agree. You make zero dollars <laughs> a day. You pay zero <laughs> salary in taxes. You cost me money. Um. I think no one needs to be making above 10 million a year. Okay. And no one should ever not have any money. So, but I'm saying that I think like that if you're making more than a million, I don't think it's going to hit much, but if you're making about a million a year, I think you're good. Yeah. Okay. That's our opinion. No scientific study behind us. Yeah. Um, All right. Someone said, what smell makes you the happiest? We all know my answer. (laughs) Yeah, but what does she smell like? Oh, goodness. <laughs> does she smell like goodness? Or are you saying, oh, goodness? Um, both. Okay. She, I don't know. Her, I'm not going to tell you guys what her perfume is. Oh, yeah. Because I don't want y'all to steal it. <laughs> it's actually discontinued. Not you gatekeeping perfume. <laughs> I'm gatekeeping my woman's scent. Um, yeah. Abby's, her Abby's her perfume. perfume. You? Um, a smell that makes me happy. Mm-hmm. Oh, Blaze's paws lately have been smelling yeah. like puppy. Oh. Aww. His puppy smell is back, and I don't know what it is. He might have a fungus and be dying. I don't care. It smells so good. It smells so I don't good. care. Um, I mean, for sure, my dogs, of course, the smell. I mm. do not like the smell of Snoop. I love the smell. I, I don't I, like, I wouldn't want to like wear it as a perfume, but when I get a whiff of him, I'm like, oh, yeah. Well, because uh, I love him, and he's my goopy boy. Yeah. And I will, I will smell him all day long because right. I love him, but like, it doesn't bring me happiness. Mm, Daisy's um, Fritos bring me happiness. Her little Frito feet. That is the, I'm so serious. That's the first thing I do in the morning is I pull her into me and I flip her little pop and I go. Oh <laughs> and God. that is how I start my day. <laughs> I love the smell of. <laughs> Joy is just done. <laughs> I can't. Oh, God. Um, I love the smell of burnt dust because it reminds me. Excuse. Yeah. Me. Let me get at it. Let me tell you about this. <laughs> So I was like, I'm going to head out. Oh it reminds gosh. me of Christmas time at my parents' house because our vents were only used for the heater oh. and grew up in Santa Barbara. And so mm-hmm. it would only get cold at the beginning of December, mm. which was the beginning of Christmas. So when they turn on the Cute. heater, all the dust that had been sitting in there would burn away and it would smell like Christmas to me. You're getting like mesothelioma. Yeah, oh, I'm and dying. Like-, <laughs> like the black mold is starting to like shrivel up and the dust is getting. <laughs> you're like, ah. Uh, amazing <laughs> Christmas time what smells make me happy I mean you definitely m- reminded me of one like Christmas time for sure I love all the Christmas mm, like smells yeah. for sure oh, yeah um and then honestly like whatever I'm like super craving for food in that moment and then Ooh. I smell it so like if I really want in and out and then I'm pulling up like that's oh. when I'm like happy I'm like my tummy's growling yeah yeah Ooh. oh my god but oh, other than that I- fresh rain yeah, oh yeah I do oh, like wet that. cement it's wet god. cement yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. What smell? It's not the grass. No, it has to be pavement or cement. Yes. Oh my god. I love the way it smells just too in the morning. Like if you get up really early when it's like dewy yeah. outside yeah. and oh, yeah. But oh, happy. and I love the beach. The way the beach smells when you first mm. get off so, the freeway. Oh, okay. So beach from afar. I hate when I get to the beach and it just smells like seaweed. Yeah. Mm. I love the sea air. Yeah. Like when you're like a half a mile away from yeah. it. Yeah. <laughs> but the sea. Breeze. Oh, Louis is whining. I was like, yeah. who is whining? Um, but yeah, like the, I, when I'm at the beach, it just kind of smells dirty to me. Yeah, same. Mm. But I but love away, the beach. Yeah, yes. I get that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 
Um, what are your favorite TikTok sounds right now? Oh, I haven't been on TikTok in a very long time. I don't know if it's my favorite, but I cannot, for the life of me, get it out of my head. What? what? Y'all already know who it is. My name's Topher, and I choose Olivia. Olivia. <laughs> I have no idea what this is. Okay. <laughs> I don't I'm know. Trying to, I'm trying to think. For a long time, it was chicken salad. Uh, 81st Deli. Salad. Superior. <laughs> Oh my what god! Is this? It's a chicken. It's salad. this little obnoxious ADHD kid named Topher who has a unique face, and he pops up on TikTok and he goes, "Y'all already know who it is," and that's just how it's, he starts every he's video. Just funny, yeah, he's hilarious. All right, I have nothing. No TikTok sounds stuck in my head. <sighs> the, the, uh, while we were, no, that's just a song. Nope. Okay. <laughs> yeah, I need to get back on TikTok. My bad. You need to get back. I've been on busy. Um. All right. This one's a little deeper. Have you noticed being in the public eye has changed people's perceptions of you? Like people as in the people around you or just? I think I would have gone with like internet people, mm. maybe. Well, how would they right, change perception? How would they change their perception if they didn't know me before? Have you noticed being in the public eye has changed people? Like maybe that changed over time? Because you've been doing it for so long. I don't know. And then, okay, let's stick with people we know then. Uh, personal life, uh, people from high school definitely thought I was cooler. Oh, yeah. Idiots. I just dress better. I'm not cooler. <laughs> um, that's it. My family hasn't changed much. Because I, well, here's my thing. With my family, my sister's bigger than me. So, and I say that in a n- no negative way yeah. whatsoever. So my family's always been more infatuated with her. Yeah. My extended family, not my you know close family and then with my f- high school friends my personal friends couldn't give i can't swear on this podcast <laughs> they don't care about my yeah. they don't even watch my stuff and that's a true friend besides joy who's my number one fan i know she watches everything <laughs> Every, she, and she watches everything i do and i love it um but yeah like my high school like best friends i more so watch care. it too because i don't really get to hang out with you guys so that's yeah. like my way of hanging out <laughs> what with are you my guys. friends doing click yeah, yeah. <laughs> honestly yeah but it gives like, me something to talk about and she doesn't get to hang out with us as much not because we don't include her but because she lives an hour away right. just to, an hour and a half yeah just most traffic that. days yeah if it's really bad i mean like today it literally took me 54 minutes yeah so. That's it just true. depends on the time that you go. Yeah. And you have dogs you can't leave for more than eight hours and same. Right, 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 right. Um, it's more so I just don't have a car. So yeah, yeah that too. that's the thing. Um, but yeah, I would say my best friends don't care. And then my like people I knew in high school definitely seem more interested in who I am now as a person. Oh, yeah. And the amount again, so small. But like as soon as I started hitting an, an amount that people started noticing, People, people came out of the, the woodwork yeah. where I was like, I literally haven't talked to you in years. Why are you commenting yeah. on my stuff now? It's so funny. Yeah. yeah. So that's it. But people online, I mean, I've grown so much. I've been online for like 10 years. Yeah. yeah. I've, I'm a very different person than I was yeah. before. I mean, I'm not in any means like popular, but the only thing I've experienced um, since becoming friends and being on some of your stuff, um, other than all the people that are obsessed with you now follow me. But yeah. um, <laughs> but I but I had people come out of the woodwork. Yeah. yeah. People that I wasn't like, I was like, I didn't like you in high school and you did not like me. Why yeah. are you messaging me? Yeah. And that was only a weird moment right in the beginning when we started hanging out. Yeah. And then but then it, it stopped, or like but. if I post anything with like Jojo in it. Yeah. Or if I post yeah. anything with any other like influencers in it, the amount of people that'll co- that'll comment and be like, hey, girl, how are you doing? Yeah. I'm like, ew. Yeah, you were mean to me in high school. Yeah, yeah, that happens. I've gotten so used to that, and so it just like doesn't even phase me. Anymore. I had a yeah. couple people ask me. I don't even remember who, but I, in the beginning, I did have a couple people that asked me because of their like my mom's friends and stuff. Their kids, like, mm-hmm. oh, so you think my joke like a joke, right? Like, yeah. oh, my daughter would love to meet JoJo, and I was, oh, I would yeah. just be like, oh, I bet she would. <laughs> like, yeah, like, like she's not like love JoJo, but she's not my friend. Like, yeah. she's my friend's friend. Yeah, like it's not. Or some people will DM me like that I do know yeah. and they'll be like, hey, could, like it would mean so much to my like, uh, niece if you could get Jojo to like record a shout out for her. Yeah. It Again, I mean, we've talked about this so many times. The things people say that they think are OK, that it, like it doesn't register. Yeah. You know, what baffles me, too, is like when you, in the nicest way you tell them like, oh, like you're trying to like brush it yeah. off a little bit. And then sometimes people respond with like, well, would that just like be too hard for her or something? You know, like makes it as in like, it's like so who easy. does she think she is? I was yeah. like, clearly you think she's a big deal. Yeah. So like, I p- have an, pay yeah. for it, get a cameo. Yeah, like, yeah, she has that every once in a while. Uh, yeah, I, 
I love the process of when people start to get to know me or Jojo. Um, I never asked Jojo for anything. Right. It's just like something that her and I have started in our relationship early on. And I think it's benefited both, both of us a lot. Yeah. That no one has to feel bad about anything. We don't ask anything. But the pe- I get a lot of people asking for stuff from Jojo. And I just go, ha! Ah! And then I just, or I just don't respond. <laughs> and I'm like, sorry. And like when Abby started dating me, people would ask her and she's like, do you think we can ask Jojo? And I was like, I never ask her for anything, but yeah. next time we see her, you're more than welcome to ask. Nope. And I would because never. Because I knew when they're like, I, we weren't going to see Jojo for a couple months, she would be get asked 10 more times. Uh-huh. And if she did, and she was just like, oh my God, I can't do this. And uh-uh. it's like, she didn't ask, she never asked Jojo for anything because it's fun. Like you first start like, oh, my niece would really yeah. like that. Oh yeah, that's one time. But then you see how often that happens. Yeah. That if you say it for one, you, you do it for everybody. That, yeah. And it's like, no, like it happens more than you think. And yeah. it's just not going to happen. And not that I'm as big as Jojo, but even being a dog trainer, like I've started to tell Dylan when we go out with coworkers and like we're just going out in general, please don't bring up that I'm a dog trainer because oh, yeah. it turns into a free a session. session and, yeah. it, and my brain is all it wants is to shut off from the dog yeah. world. And now here I am. And the worst part about it, like, for instance, we were out with one of his coworkers and her girlfriend. Super nice. Like, she's really sweet, right? And so she hears from Dylan, I'm a, do- I'm a dog trainer. And she, oh, my God, right? And when they start like that, I'm like, God. Oh, God. Go. So she, long story short, she tells me how she has an Australian shepherd, has a lot of issues, right? And then one of the questions I asked was like, oh, is he neutered? And and she goes, no, I'm not going to neuter him. I'm actually looking into like breeding him and having litters and like all this stuff. But and he's got I, issues? I, yes. So I just stopped. I was like, I, I can't have That's this conversation go, with you. Mm, I have diarrhea. Yeah. And then just run away. <laughs> I was like, I can't have this. She's telling me oh about how he's God. reactive and bites and all this yeah. stuff. But I want to have his puppy. She's like, he so. has all these health conditions too, but I think I can just breed it right, right out. <laughs> right. Yeah. Oh, my goodness. I get it, guys. When I go out in public, everyone's like, Emily, cry on demand. Emily. It gives me such a headache. And then for an hour, I'm, <laughs> I'm sitting at the table now stressing about a dog that I've never met. <laughs> it's yeah. like, I just can't. I can't do it anymore. Yeah. Uh, anyway. So, yeah. I don't that's people's opinions have changed except the people that I really care about and love me yeah I think the people closest to me are just proud because they know this is like what I've always wanted to do and so they're just like so excited and proud and like rooting and like that's the only thing yeah so yeah yeah. my best friends either watch all my stuff like uh, Joy does or don't care (laughs) and I love them yeah (laughs) oh my god okay um what is the worst thing about living in California uh the price the price Mm. I mean, it's the, literally the only thing I can complain about. I love the weather. I love the politics. Mm-hmm. I love my family. Mm-hmm. My friends are here, except some of them. The earthquakes get me sometimes. I, yeah, but there's. I feel like I would take an earthquake over some of the other natural tornado di- disaster hurricanes. I got a tornado TikTok last night, and that's such gnarly. Oh my gnarly. god! No, I lived through hurricanes. Well, I guess I wasn't in like New Orleans or like anything right, like that. Or but Florida, or Florida. But when I was in Texas, um, we had bad tornadoes, and I remember one of the tornadoes literally picked up like a semi truck. No, nope. no, nope. yeah, nope. like that's nope. yeah. But we so. did have a tornado in LA not too long ago. Did you see that? Oh, I did see that. Yeah, it was like a little like windy thing. It was yeah. Um, it one of my crazy. friends sent it to me and was like, "What's happening in California?" Blah, blah, blah. And I was like, honestly, that's nothing. But yeah, like, yeah. but it was more than what. Yeah, it's not get. like a wind. It was just like a little. Yeah. The worst. The worst part about it is is the price because California yeah. is beautiful. I oh no! It. I also think the other worst part about it. The drought. The littering. We so many times when I go to like Texas or Vegas, uh-huh. it's so clean. It is so dirty Virginia? out here on the side of our freeways, uh-huh. um, really? downtown, I guess you grew up. by the yeah. beaches. Like it is. The Virginia so beaches. Trash. That's what I was trying to explain to my ex-wife because she grew up in San Francisco, went to college in San Diego, spent a lot of time in L.A. And I was explaining to her, I like East Coast beaches so much more, not because like the weather's better or the water's better, because they're so clean. Yeah. yeah. And we don't it's not like people go and clean it up. It's like we just all pick up after. Ourselves. Right. Well, I wonder why California doesn't do that. I think honestly and like. I think it's because a lot of people move very specifically to California um, to live a non-typical life or like the purpose like not I'm not saying like people experiencing homelessness but like there's camper life van life there's a lot of people that choose I was gonna say do we have higher homelessness here a lot yeah but but other than that though like I'm not just talking about the the place where there's homeless people but like I can't tell you how many times I've been on the road and I see somebody literally unwrap something and they throw the wrapper out the window or I've seen I've seen people chuck water bottles out the window. Like I was oh at a God. I was at a red light in Woodland Hills where I used to live yeah. and somebody threw a whole thing of trash like her McDonald's wrappers, all this stuff oh. just throws all this trash out the window. 
All I wanted to do was get out the car, pick it up and throw it right back in her car. But oh the light my turned God. green. I, I and I, I rolled down my window. I was like, you're trash. Like, because I was so pissed. That's so messed up. Like, you just pick it up and shove it. And you're like, I think you dropped this. At least even if it makes its way out of the trash, that's one thing. But at least just put it in the dang trash. We also like, have, I don't, have a higher population, too. So yeah. I think it's a yeah. lot of things. We have the, a really big homeless population. We have a high like just population yeah. in general. Yeah. We have people that don't give a crap because they think they're better than everyone else here in L.A. Yeah. Yeah. And then we also have like the simple life people that. Yeah, I've in my old neighborhood. I lived in like it was a very suburban neighborhood, like very closed off. Like it was off a of main street. And there were people that would drive in and sleep in their cars in our neighborhood yeah mm-hmm. and um and then in the morning i would be walking one of my dogs and i would see them open their door throw a bunch of trash out close the door and drive away it's like they lived in their car yeah, yeah. and it was like morning time time to clean up my oh. house and just throw everything out the way in my in my like suburban yeah. neighborhood it wasn't yeah. right good. santa clarita was the same same way yeah. like even though I feel like they did a better in those kind of cities, they do a better job of like doing some street cleaning yeah. and stuff. But still, like it has to happen on a weekly basis or yeah. else it'll just pile up. Yeah, Virginia. is Well, the place I grew up in is just not like that. That's yeah. crazy. Yeah. Like I noticed that when I was driving through Vegas, my sister said it actually. She's like, I can't believe how clean everything mm-hmm. looks. And it's Vegas. Like Vegas right. really yeah. isn't that like clean. Yeah, yeah no. But it says a lot. Wow. Yeah. All right. So the price and the trash. Mm-hmm. Yep um and the drought for me what is your favorite date that you've ever been on april 15th no (laughs) it's not too hot and it's not too cold um i don't know had a lot of good dates why are we all staring at me am i supposed to start (laughs) favorite favorite date just like what's like the question what's your favorite number or you're asking favorite date as in like dating somebody i love you so much it said, what the, your favorite date you've gone on with somebody? Right. Oh, okay. okay. Yeah. But she made the joke before this. Have you ever watched Miss Congeniality? Not for a long time. Oh, okay. Where, okay. One of us says, describe your perfect date. And she says, April 15th. Because it's not it. too hot and I not was too cold. All you need is a light jacket. Got it. And got you- it. <laughs> that when I was like. I you were staring at me. You were like, okay. <laughs> I was like, what do I not understand? It reminds me of like, what's her name? Demi Moore or whatever. When they said, what's your favorite no, Demi Lovato. Demi Lovato. What's your favorite dish, as in food? And she's like, well, I, I love, love mugs. Because it <laughs> keeps your hands so warm. <laughs> That's adorable. Yeah. Uh, before we answer, we actually have to change the battery in the camera because it's oh, overheating. Okay. So okay. let's check to see if we have another sponsor for today. Sponsor, sponsor. Oh, we're back. I'm here. Okay. My favorite date. Um, I'm, I'm just going to pick the first date I ever had with Abby, obviously. Okay. That, that was mine, too, with my girlfriend. It was your our- first date with Abby? Yeah. Oh, right. Yeah. <laughs> It was so magical. No, yeah, no, our first date because it was my first official. Like, oh, actually, I'm torn between her and my first meetup and her and my first official date because the meetup was hilarious. Mm. Joy at my house telling me to do it. We're just having the vanilla fr- sugar, the vanilla sh- spraying me down. Uh, just that whole getting ready for I it. Thought, and, then, and then once you left out the door, I was like, she could die. <laughs> <laughs> Meeting up with a stranger. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, and then. That first day, like it was the first time uh, Abby and I had been talking for three weeks mm-hmm. on FaceTime. So to meet up in person was like, I realized how like comfortable I was and how not nervous I was. And also it was my first time I got to make out with her. But mm-hmm. <laughs> we had like, it was so like no pressure, very chill. And then our actual first date was a lot of fun. But I felt like there was more pressure on the actual first date mm. than the meetup. Because mm. the meetup was like, this is all right, we're, we're testing. And then the actual first date, we're like, oh, we like each other. For yeah. real. Like we met up in person. It works. Okay. 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 We got to keep this going. Right. So I think the first time we met up, Aww. which was fun, like we didn't actually do anything, but we like went, we stargazed in the back of my truck before we went officially stargazing. And like we were in some parking lot and laid in the back of my truck. Aww. And then we like walked, it was during COVID. So she walked me like downtown in the area she lived in and everything was closed. Mm-hmm. And we just held hands and walked down the street and she pointed out all the, her favorite places. And That's then we just cool. sat in the truck and talked for a really long time. That's nice. Yeah. 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 So. I love that. Yeah. Nice. Joy? I don't know. Um. <laughs> okay. Emily, do you want to tell me yours? <laughs> um, yeah. It was the, the first like official date that uh, my girlfriend and I went on. We, uh, I basically was trying to cram in as much of LA as I could to like be a, a tour, like a tour guide. Oh. And so I took her to Griffith Park and we watched the sunset there. And then like that part, I mean, it was fine or whatever, but my favorite part was that I took her to Malibu to one of my favorite beaches that dogs are allowed on. And I brought like 
three massive blankets. We brought a little picnic with us, even though it was pitch black out. And it's not like to get to this beach, you have to walk down this really steep staircase. And so no cars were like driving by. So it was like dead silent, Mm -hmm. pitch black. There were so many stars in the sky. And we just laid under the blanket with Daisy. And we just like, yeah, stargazed and talked about everything. And it was just magical. Mm -hmm. (laughs) That's cute. Joy. Uh, It's hard for me to recollect my first year with Dylan because um, there was a lot going on that year, but also like our relationship just kind of like molded into. Yeah, it wasn't like an official like, hi, I would like to ask you out on a date now. Right. uh, Right. We we were just friends and then we started seeing each other more. And then Christmas of that year, he asked me to be his girlfriend. But we do do dates like once a week. And I really enjoy that, especially because my last two boyfriends, I was the only breadwinner so it's mm. nice to go and like be able to treat somebody and also get like treated yeah well. yeah yeah abby and i try and do dates often mm-hmm. um, yeah and if we haven't gone on one in like a month because we're so busy i'll be like hey want to go on a date with me she'd be like yeah and then sometimes i'll be like we should go on a date soon she goes i'll take you on one Aww. and so like <laughs> we both like make the effort yeah so it is nice like but yeah obviously my most memorable one it's gonna be like our first one yeah right 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 all right what's the next okay um someone said what is still left on your bucket lists what's still left on my bucket list Mm -hmm. Uh, get married okay go to alaska nice see the northern lights love it see the grand canyon you've You've never never seen seen the grand Grand canyon Canyon? i've shocked them all oh my god yes people we've done something you haven't done (laughs) i i genuinely i pulled a ron swanson if you watch parks and rec i genuinely cried when i saw the grand canyon for the first time because, really? because I went out there, and again, we were in a very... I'm same- so tall. You, I know. <laughs> I'm like, like, why I, did I sit in this seat? You guys I are wanted to tell you that when I was sitting at the Well, camera. we're also sinking into the... Yeah, there you go. Yeah. Um, we went during sunset, and we went to a spot that no one else was, and I watched the sunset, and then I watched kayakers down in the river, and I watched them build a, a campsite for the night, and I was just like, it just reminded me how freaking beautiful this, like, earth is, and I got into this, like, very spiritual, like, moment where I got into my own head, but... <laughs> It when I good. went and saw, the, it. saw Niagara Falls, I was bored. Oh, same. Okay, great. Yeah. Good. Glad you had that yeah. same reaction. Yeah. yeah. I was like, I, sometimes I see these like natural, uh, like these amazing things of the world and I'm like, eh. ah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What, what's on your bucket list? Number one is I want to see wild orca in why, the wild <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> on a boat. Okay. Um, number two is I just want to see a uh, go whale watching in general. We can make both of these things happen. Why don't, why don't you num- two go on Danny's boat next week? Yeah, because there's orcas right now. There's orcas and whales all over. They oh, went and saw them yesterday. I remember we talked about it. Yeah, I saw the yeah. video. I can't go because I get so seasick. Yeah. So why don't you, Danny would love to take you guys out to it next weekend. Yeah, Woo! we'll figure I'll have okay. to look at my schedule for yeah. next weekend. Go. And then number three is um, I definitely want to like go out of the country. I want to go to Europe. And, Do you have like, a passport yet? Put, 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 no. Where were I? Pa- like I a- pester her every week. Yeah, I know. Go get your passport. My, my, she did try. I and get did one. buy <laughs> it, and then my mom lost it, and then I bought another one, and that one hasn't come. So I'm it just. How has it not come? I feel like I don't you know. Should talk to someone. Yeah, this. no, I should. I should. It's just okay. so many other things came up in life, and then um, I'm trying to think. I feel like there were a few others. I definitely. Want, I think I didn't want to at first, but I do think now I want to jump out of them a plane at least <gasps> no one. please i Not will go chance. with you <laughs> no I no bungee jumping or anything but i i think i'll jump out of a plane one time with a professional yeah no nope. i'll do it with you yeah Have fun um, another thing that you guys can go do on your own yeah <laughs> and i want to shark dive okay no, you can go do that too um and i think i think that's yeah. it for the most part like the big things like this has yeah, to happen before things. you want to buy a house well, I mean, those are things I just look at life things like those yeah, are going to come. Life. Oh, OK. For me, that's yeah. not like bucket bucket list in my head is like th- extraordinary circumstances. Things that you have to really go out of your way to do that you really would want to make sure you get done yeah. before you're not here anymore. Yeah. All right. I want to see the Northern Lights. Yep. That's oh, yeah. Number one. And then I want to go plane walking. You can do it in Washington and some guy takes you out on his plane and you hook yourself into this little um rope and you stand up when he reaches a certain elevation and you walk to the front of the plane which is open and then you hook yourself into the little ropes and then he flies his plane while you stand there on the front of the plane in the open air because i've been shark cage diving and i've been bungee jumping and i've been <laughs> skydiving there this is my so next we need to amp it up <laughs> exactly emily, what's next free rock climbing <laughs> emily needs adrenaline in her life to feel something <laughs> I'm good. Yeah. No, I do I like do. a little bit of the adrenaline too. Mm-hmm. Nah, I'm chilling. But also Northern Lights. You I know, think that's, that's cool why too. I love like the, some working with like aggressive dogs so much or like 
hor- like horseback riding and back in the day I used to always get asked for the horse that had the most behavior issues because I like is today the day you right. know I like the adrenaline yes. rush and the challenge and yeah oh my god next question I just don't like that you guys want to just are trying to feel alive by trying to die <laughs> it's also bragging we're just getting a little too. closer to god you know okay. yeah a little closer <laughs> see I don't find those bragging rights really no oh if I someone's love like that. I've done this I'd be like cool Oh, I love telling people I've gone like skydiving and shark Oh, diving. you love telling people the things uh-huh. you've done. I'm like, meh. But those things are pretty cool. Oh, like, they are. To be able Rachel's to see the sharks. Only one that doesn't give me a reaction. Everyone's like, oh my God, tell me about the sharks. Or, oh my oh, God. God. I don't care. You're just like, okay. <laughs> Everyone else thinks it's cool. I just think I see I think, trauma. I think it's so fascinating just so to see. So many untraumatized people do that stuff. Yeah, I, I think it's so fascinating just to see like videos. And so, I mean, I'm obsessed with Shark Week. Yeah. But, yeah. I, but everyone always says, you have no idea what they actually look like, like up close. Yeah, yeah. Well, I believe that. Yeah. I fully Same believe Same thing that. with whales. Like, yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Joy's on. So this one doesn't count. Um, it was a gay question. I want to know her answer. I was going to say, is it racist? You could turn it into racism if you want. Oh, okay. okay well, great. I mean, ask it anyway. I don't have to. What was the most anti-gay interaction you've had? Someone called me a uh, ass lesbian to my face and then said he would punt kick Abby's dog cute <laughs> holy cow uh, she had to pull me how back. are you not an orange um, yeah because abby pulled me away i oh. went to i went at him and she pulled me away holy and i was like your cow. girlfriend matters more than this situation walk away holy cow i mean i'm not gay but i've i have had this reoccurring issue where people who i'm really close with um and it's happened more than once where their boyfriend or their girlfriend or, i mean their boyfriend or their husband doesn't like me and they secretly think I'm gay and they secretly think I'm like out for their wife or girlfriend. So that's like just, I think, really annoying. And then, um, yeah. Well, and Abby would, if they found us naked in bed with Joy, they'd be like, okay, okay. okay. <laughs> I, just think, I just think it's so rude. They know that we're like, not doing that. Not, yeah. not, not, not that it's a bad thing to be gay. Right. I just think it's so rude because I, I love my best friend or my one girlfriend so yeah. much because I'm so nice to them or treat yeah. them this way. They can't fathom. Right. Uh, they I don't have under- to be gay. Yeah. Men don't understand why you'd be nice to a woman if only they, the only reason they're nice to them is to have sex with them. Right. Yeah. So they can't fathom why someone would just be nice to a woman. Right. And right. I'm like one of those people who do does go above and beyond. Like, so I think that too, and maybe in a way they're threatened. Like, yeah. <laughs> like you know, I, I don't know, but it has happened. That's annoying. That is annoying. Emily, what's yours? Oh, right. Um, <laughs> I think I had a lot of people deny me for my wedding in Virginia. I had a lot of vendors once they found out because mm-hmm. my, my ex-wife's name is androgynous. So once they found out it was two women, they were like, oh, nope. Oh, and oh, it broke my heart. I'd had I'd followed this wedding video production company since I was in my senior year of high school. And I'd always told myself because I love their videos. I said, when I get married, I'm hiring them to come. Yeah. Film, and they went because it was two women. Wow. Wow. Mm-hmm. Oh, this one was really cute. What's a moment in life where you thought this is where I'm meant to be? This is all things internet, <laughs> not uncensored. Oh, I didn't even go there. Oh, that was my first thought. <laughs> Me either. I, I just heard crickets and I was like, am I going to cry? This is where I'm meant to be. <laughs> <laughs> um. <laughs> oh, my God. No, I mean, no, now, now, now that's where my mind's going. <laughs> yep, yep. Mine was... When she first walked into the dog training and saw me. I knew it. Oh, no, there's Reggie. been a there's been a few moments in my life where I'm like, oh yeah, this is what I meant to this is what is meant for me. Yeah. One was the night of I was in my official first date when okay. we were cuddling. Um our clothes maybe not were on our bodies anymore, but we were just cuddling and I was like, Oh, this is right. Oh, you dirty spot. <laughs> no, <laughs> but I was just feeling myself against a, a woman and I'm being like, yeah. oh, this is this is what is Yes. Yes. This just the only word it was yes. Yeah. And um and then I don't know. When I just in emergency situations, I'm very good in emergency situations. Mm. Like I'm good at remaining calm and knowing what to do next. And every time this happens, I'm like, I'm meant to do this stuff and I'm not doing anything with it with my life. But I'm like, Yeah, this is what I'm meant to do. Yeah. Okay. I like that. Joy. Same. I've definitely had moments where I've, I've been really sure of myself or sure of a decision that I've made after the fact because of the way things have worked out. And I'm like, yeah. oh, yeah, that was meant to happen or I was meant mm-hmm. to do this. Yeah. But as far as like this is 
I, I like I was having a conversation with Dylan not too long ago because um, I was having a really hard week and I was like having a full breakdown to him and him and I were like talking through it and he's like, well, what do you really want? And I um, or how would how will, can this get better? Um, and I that's told a, him that's a good yeah good boy and good I boy. and I told him that I ever since I was little I've always told myself like you know what you want to do like keep pushing for that and I said one day I'm gonna wake up I'm gonna walk outside look over my ranch and see all the things that I've always pictured myself having and then I'll be able to say to myself finally like this is where I'm supposed to be yeah okay. and so that's what I'm working for towards that I towards where that. I'm supposed to be yeah. all right yeah. it's good motivation mine um I was on Danny's boat because like the um, the past few years of my life, really all of my life, like I didn't feel like I had very much like a purpose and I didn't know what I was doing with my life because I got my degree. I wasn't using it. Then I was moving around to be with my ex-wife where she needed to be. And it was like it was always I didn't have like a big purpose. And then when I moved here, it was like. The end of the summer, like the end of last summer. And you and I had just gotten into really good rhythm with filming. You Mm -hmm. had just asked me to work full time. Like I had just moved out here. I was on my own for the first time, which I was really scared to do. And I was on Danny's boat and we saw dolphins. And I remember just in that moment thinking this is exactly where I'm supposed to be. I'm supposed to be in California. I'm supposed to have this job. I'm supposed to have these Mm -hmm. friends. This is the life I deserve and I'm meant to be experiencing. And it was very like, I don't know. It was very nice. Yeah. Yeah. I had that. I when I bought this house and moved here, I was very scared. Mm-hmm. And there were a few times where I was like, when we were th- throwing big parties and people were just stopping by, they still do that. <laughs> I was like, this is what my life is supposed to be. Cause I always lived when I moved out in high school, um, after high school, I moved out for college. I moved to this town like way outside of LA. That was just like nothing. And then after that, I didn't know where to go. Mm-hmm. And so like, I just, I like, kept moving more west but like just town by town and then i ended up buying a house just because it was near my sister but i didn't have any ties to that area i didn't have a community out there i there was there was no reason for me to be there but it was just like near my sister and i just didn't know where else Mm -hmm. to go and then like i literally didn't have a group of friends everyone was so spread out and then I met Joy. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, oh, I got a friend near me. A friend. And then um, I met Abby and then I, I met Emily and like, it, I started having like people. And then when I moved out here, I got like a bigger group and I was like, I have friends in this area. I have a reason to be here. I'm closer to my parents. And I was like, oh, yeah, this is. And when people started popping by, I was like, oh, I love this. Mm-hmm, people mm-hmm. never did that with my old house. Joy was the only person that ever stopped by. <laughs> <laughs> and it was just near the end. And so I was like, this is this. I like this. I like that people can come. They can hang out. Like, I have mm-hmm. so much space. So, like, buying this house was definitely, like, the right move for me. Yeah. Good. Yeah, Good. moving. Yeah. Love that. This is a deep. <laughs> I know. We got deep. All right. Yeah. What? Do we have one more? I mean, we have lots more. But okay. I don't know what time we're on. We're at uh, 52. Oh, okay. Oh, nice. Uh, when you two first became friends, what about each other made the friendship stand out? So us three. You, you two first because you two were the originals. Um, <laughs> our friendship, we stood, I will, like, how, how what it made it stand out or how yeah. did we click? I think it could be whatever. I knew we were friends when we were both being super obnoxious in this uh, CPR class we were taking. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> we Just, were, like, weren't taking it seriously or something? Well, no, because we, we were... We would listen and then first it just took everyone else six years to understand what we understood in two seconds. <laughs> and so Joy just like goofing off with me. I was just like, oh, yeah, she's a buddy. Yeah. Uh-huh. Like she can meet my energy and she's funny. But yeah, just her just we, we vibed and I was just like, oh, yeah, I like her a lot. Like, I knew after the first time we went to that lunch together because um, I I I didn't realize how like stressed and overwhelmed and belittled like I didn't realize how crappy I felt being in that space we were we were doing we were volunteering at a job yeah and I noticed the person running it was not treating joy nicely I didn't even know joy I was just observing yeah and so I, I took her to lunch when we went to lunch after that and we went back for that little bit of time I just felt this huge weight lifted off my back I felt like I had like somebody that saw me I felt like I had somebody that like actually liked me somebody that would support me like I just I felt like I had somebody there Mm -hmm. everybody there had somebody and they were all in this little 
group that I was the outsider of. Mm. So that's after that. And then I started looking forward to going to training because for a while I was thinking about quitting because I was like, I don't think I can do this anymore. Yeah. And then I started looking forward to it more because of of Rachel. And then we moved in together and it, it was just easy. <laughs> like It was. Yeah, it was really easy. Yeah. Yeah. I, yeah, I I was scared to take. I wanted to go to that lunch with you because I wanted I was like, I feel like that shit and I could vibe. <laughs> um. But then also I was like, I was so shocked when she asked me to like, <laughs> somebody wants to be my friend. You're like looking behind you. You're like me. <laughs> me? <laughs> but I was scared because I don't know. Like I, I didn't want to like be stepping on people's toes, but yeah. I mm-hmm. also don't like seeing a woman being belittled by a man. Yeah. So I was scared that how you were going to take it. Yeah. And I also like if I was going to be like one of the other people that runs back, like, yeah, runs, runs back, back and, and like, tells, tells him. master. Yeah. yeah. And I was just like, uh, you know, like this ain't cool. Right. Yeah. And then when we went back and did the class, we were like, because that's what that one girl did. The one girl that he ended up firing member. Like, I can't remember her name. She was there. She had like the short haircut. I can't remember her name now. Oh, Jamie. Yes. I remember I really liked her when he yeah, fired cool. her. I called her to be like, I'm so sorry. Please know I'm here for you. Like if you want to train together. And she can- told him. And she told him. After he had fired her. After he was so mean to her. Like this was, uh, we and it, it, we realized now it was like kind of cult. Like he was oh, trying to was, start a cult. Yeah, it was bad. And uh, I was just, just like, no, I'm good. Yeah. And but like, so bounce. I could understand where that like hesitate because my hes- hesitation was there too. I didn't know who I could confide in. I didn't mm-hmm. know who I could talk to. He was to. trying to get us to sign a contract, but not read it first. An NDA. And I read it and I was like, joy. I texted her separate and I was like, do not sign this. And he called me out in front of everybody because he's like, are you actually reading it? And I said, yes, you're asking for my signature. On a legal document. <laughs> On a legal I, document. The, yeah. The, yeah, no. So anyway. that's, we clicked because... I mean, maybe it was a trauma bond, <laughs> but I just, I think we, when we met, we were, we were just like, oh, that chick seems cool. And yeah. then we just like saw each other and laughed. No, yeah. it was easy. Love that. And then you came along. And then I came along. <laughs> <laughs> well, after I, I knew after like maybe into like month two, I knew like, oh, I know Rachel and Emily will get along. Mm. And, but I knew you were also really careful about like who came over and stuff like yeah. that. So I definitely like slid in the invitation and I knew you were open now to making friends and yes. stuff. And so I was like, she's super cool. She does know who you are. Yeah. Like when Joy and I met, I was, um, date was in my last relationship <laughs> and she people weren't, <laughs> people weren't allowed at my house. That was a rule that was just like, it, people were not supposed to come over. And so, I could, Emily's face in the house <laughs> you bought. So whenever I met up with Joy, it was like I was like, oh, let's meet up at a park or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then COVID hit, and so we couldn't really hang out. Um. And then when I was no longer in that relationship, then I was like, oh, people can come over to my house. Uh, I can have come over. over. And I called Joy. I was like, come live with me. We did not know each other very well. No, we didn't. And I was like, can you move in? And she was like, okay. okay. <laughs> so she moved in for like a month or two. Yeah. <laughs> and then yeah. I remember too that when I called Emily and I was like so Emily because I hadn't, I hadn't told her before like do you um do you want to meet her like do you want me yeah, to see no. if we could be fair I had never said anything before yeah. and so when I called Emily and I was like hey what are you doing tomorrow um oh I don't know and I was like do you want to come over and like hang out with me and Rachel and she's like Rachel Rachel or like Rachel, said, so she Rachel? said like something like Rachel like and I was like yeah Rachel she's like, okay I promise I'll be on my best behavior like I remember no. you just went on this whole rant knowing Emily now versus the emily i met like the emily i met like when i first met her she acted like she didn't know who i was and, like, i was trying to be real because she told joy told me she wasn't going to tell you that i knew that you knew who you were <laughs> she i knew who i was because she knew it freaked me out if yeah you i knew, knew it would stress you out yeah, yeah. But i knew joy knew better than to try and pull one over yeah. on me yeah because if you also come out and be like oh well i've been watching your yeah i would have yeah. d- i, I i'm not trying to break the trust of my new yeah. friend yeah. here like but yeah. uh, and I knew you would be comfortable enough eventually telling yes. her. But yeah, now yeah. knowing you probably spent so much time thinking about what you were going to wear. Yes. What you were going to smell like. Yes. It was so what you were going to say. Yes. If Daisy smelled good or bad. Eh. Oh, yeah. I forgot. <laughs> we did bring Daisy. We did a yeah. little pack. We did a little pack walk. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And then you came over again with your ex and I let. No, I came over for a, a second training session. Oh, yeah. And I let Daisy run around my backyard. And, and when you let Daisy run around your backyard, you went inside to go do something and you and I were just sitting outside and we finally got to talk and I think that's when you got comfortable with me yeah and then you were like next time you come over please bring like your wife with you and like let's not dog train let's just like have fun yeah and that's when we really clicked yeah I came over with a giant bottle of Tito's yep. and I said let's talk yeah just spent the whole night yeah, yeah. 
talking yeah. and that was really great. It was, it was definitely fun though in the beginning and your Woodland Hills house and like there's a lot of good memories there for sure. Oh yeah. We created a lot of memories very quickly. All yeah. of I think all three of us needed a new best friend at that time. Yeah. Yeah. I would like, agree. We were all looking for a new little community and a new person that was just like didn't know my last stuff. I yeah. think it was a turning point in all of our, our lives. Oh, yeah. Mm-hmm. All of us were in a, a, a rough spot right yeah. there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And we all just kind of like found each other and then grew new lives from there. We also yeah. are all Well, I, how long did I know you before that? Two years? Um, Like a year and a half. Year yeah. and a half. Yeah. 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 Which was through Rover. We talk about this a lot, too. It literally could have been one different click. And yeah. And yeah. this wouldn't be because my ex-wife was the one that found her on rover so if she hadn't have picked her out like none of this would exist i think about that all the time i do too i think it's crazy all That's hilarious. the time yeah. yeah yeah and same thing like if you didn't go to stefano or if you met him that one day and you were like oh heck no yeah we never we never would have met yeah yeah I'm wild <sighs> we would probably pass each other in the grocery store or something i didn't know yeah i mean <laughs> you probably would have come over and trained my oh i found um Stefano through my neighbor Karen, right? Who you now work with, right? So you probably would have ended up in my neighborhood. But although that point. that only happened, she only became my client because she saw me working with you. Oh, that's true. That's true. That's yeah. true. Yeah, because she was like, "I'm not seeing progress." I was like, "I wasn't either." I switched to Joy. <laughs> <laughs> We're talking about dog training stuff. Anyway, all right. Um, it's been an hour. I think that's it for today. Yeah. That was a good yeah. episode. I enjoyed I mean, this. I had that was fun. fun. I had a lot of fun. Me too. All right, great. Um, I hope you guys enjoyed this weird little uh, musical episode. We didn't sing, but you're you're better off that we, we didn't. Could. What's the Grey's Anatomy that Thanks. they always do? <laughs> What's that song? <laughs> That's it. That's what I think about musical episodes. No, no, it's all no. <laughs> all right, uh, please follow, like, subscribe, do all the things, and we'll see you next week with a, a normal episode. Well, I'll still, I'm gonna be on a cruise ship. Yeah. I don't it might it might be an Emily solo or, or Joy or and Joy Emily come up yeah <laughs> do, do an episode yeah okay. you do you do, yeah. do an episode just tell me the date yeah you don't have to you don't have to know anything you just sit there and listen to her and you just go you just go wow what? uh-huh huh? what does that mean <laughs> and then every like 20 minutes you go sponsor sponsor <laughs> yeah she, I'll make her in charge of sponsor sponsor perfect <laughs> all right uh, I love you guys and we'll see you next time bye, bye. <laughs> Thank you for listening to this week's episode of All Things Internet. Please make sure to like and follow our podcast on whichever platform you're currently listening to it on. And make sure to follow us at Podcast ATI on Twitter, where you can ask questions and get the latest updates on our show. We love you. Thanks for listening. I'm Rachel Ballinger, and this has been All Things Internet.